Hey, welcome back. So with the release of Agent Kit and Agent Builder this week, I thought it'd be fun for us to create an entire MCP server from scratch, deploy it up onto the cloud, specifically Fly.io, hook up Agent Builder to it, see it running, and for even more fun, we're gonna do it with what I think is the world's fastest MCP server. So just to give you an idea of the performance, it's running on my machine at around 39,000 requests per second and can handle over 5,000 concurrent connections. So before we go and create our MCP server, we're just gonna hook quickly into Agent Builder to see what this is gonna look like. So I'm gonna go to platform.openai.com forward slash Agent Builder. And then once I'm in there, I'm just gonna be able to create a very quick new workflow. So we'll click on create. So I'm just gonna click on the agent and I'm gonna modify the instructions slightly and just say you should use tools whenever performing uh, math calculations. And the reason I'm gonna put that is just so it doesn't try and answer the questions for itself. So once I've selected that, I'm gonna click on tools and then you see this hosted MCP server. So I'm gonna click on that. And then although OpenAI gives a whole bunch of pre-built MCP servers that you can use, I wanna use my own custom server. So I'm just gonna click on plus server. And then I'm gonna stick in uh, the URL of the custom MCP server. Now here's one I built earlier and it's the same one that we are gonna to build today. So I will paste in and it's gonna be hello-mcp.fly.dev forward slash MCP. So by the very fact that you can see forward slash MCP, you know it's an HTTP streamable MCP server. Uh, we'll just say uh, uh, custom server. So I think that will do. We don't need authentication on this. Um, so I'll just select none on authentication. We'll click connect. And you'll see it's establishing connection to the MCP server running up on fly. And you can see it's picked three tools. It's got a hello tool. We'll go through what those tools look like uh, when we build the server. And you see add numbers and calculate. So I think that's pretty good. I'm just gonna uh, hit add. And now I can click on preview here. And then we will say add the following numbers. And we'll just put a couple of numbers and uh, we'll put this. So we'll run that for a second. And then as you can see, uh, what should happen is it'll recognize it needs to use a tool. It's gonna to use the add numbers. It's passed in those two parameters. I'm gonna click approve. And now it's gonna go off to my MCP server running on fly. And then it comes back with the answer. So that is the end output. So now what we need to do is go build the MCP server and deploy it. So as you can see here, I'm in an empty folder. There's nothing in here. So what I'm gonna do is scaffold up an MCP server and I'm gonna scaffold it up with my Chuck MCP server, which is the super fast MCP server that I was talking about. So to scaffold up that server, we just need to type in UVX. Of course, you're gonna to have to have UV installed. I'm sure you figured out how to do that by now. Uh, Chuck-MCP-server. And then I'm gonna uh, pass in the init argument and then we'll pass in hello-mcp. So in this case, hello-mcp is gonna be the name of the server. In fact, to make it more fun, we'll just call it hello-mcp-2. Uh, so we will run uh, init there. And then you can see here that the scaffolder has created a project directory called hello-mcp2. It's created my server, my Pi project. Uh, it's created the Docker file, Docker Compose and a git ignore it. So, and again, it's given me a couple of instructions on how to get started. So we can just clear that. And if I just do ls, and then we go into hello mcp2, you can see all of the folders um, that have been created. And I can just open this up in Visual Studio Code. So if we open up the server.py for a second, you can see it's got a dependency from Chuck MCP server and it imports tool resource and run. And they are the very same tools that you saw earlier. You saw hello, you saw add numbers, and you saw calculate when we did that in Agent Builder. Now notice that uh, you see it's marked as def there. It actually does support async. So if I just change that to async and then um, it would become async native. So maybe in a future version of the scaffolder, I'll just switch that to being async first. But for just now, I've just set it to be uh, synchronous. Um, so add two numbers, pretty simple. It's just doing a return A plus B. And then the key thing here is in order to mark something as an MCP tool, you just need to give it the tool decorator. Now you can pass in things like descriptions, et cetera. Um, that is covered in the readme uh, on the project, but you don't need to worry about that just now. So if we wanna see this running, I can just do a UV sync. 
So that is now got the latest version. You see I'm running Chuck MCP server at 0.4.4, which is the latest version. And then if I do a UV run uh, server.py, you're gonna see that it's gonna automatically start up an STDIO mode. So it's not doing anything exciting there. It's just giving me some info messages, um, but you can see that it has started. So if I want to talk to the STDIO server, I can just pass in an, uh, an MCP message. So in this case, I'm gonna do a tools list. Uh, and then I'm just gonna pipe that into my uh, server.py. So if I run that for a second, you see it's gonna come back and it's listing ad numbers, um, the calculate and the hello that we had before. So that works. And if I wanted to talk to it with some sort of MCP client in the same way as I did with Agent Builder, then I could just use any MCP tool, whether it's cursor, whether it's called desktop, or in this case, I'm gonna use MCP CLI, which is one I created. And all I'm gonna do is pass in the server name is hello2, the provider's open AI, and the model is GPT-5 mini. So if I run that for a second, you see uh, it's gonna come back with the tools. There's the tools, and I'll just say add the following numbers. Uh, and again, we'll just put in and some random numbers, and then it's gonna come back with the answer. And you see there is the result. 256464. Uh, and again, how that works underneath the hood is in my server config for MCP CLI, I am just passing in uh, hello2, that's the name of the server, command is uv, and pass in the directory, which is the hello MCP2 directory that we just run, and then I'm passing the server.py. And again, same config works pretty much anywhere. So that's STDIO, but what I need to be able to do to make this work with Agent Builder is I need this to run with uh, HTTP streamable. So to do that, I'm gonna come back into uh, my folder of my Hello MCP2, and I'm just gonna run uv run server.py. I'm gonna tell it to run as HTTP, so IE HTTP streamable rather than SCDIO. If I wanted to run SCDIO, I could type in that, or if I wanted SSE, I could type in uh, SSE, but I want it to run as HTTP streamable. I want it to run on at port 8000. And then for fun, I'm gonna switch my log levels down to warning so that we can I can show you the benchmark and how fast this runs. So we'll just run that. And then you can see it started up my server. So uh, you see Chuck MCP server. Um, it's got the name, the location, and then it's telling you what tools are available. Hello, add numbers. And again, if I wanted to just check it works, I can just run the health service and you see it's connected up uh, to port 8000 called the health endpoint and it's got its uptime. So we know the server's up and running. Now, to prove the benchmarks in the uh, Chuck MCP server at GitHub, I've actually created a benchmarking file. So you can do a UV run at benchmarks forward slash and there's ultra minimal MCP performance test. So if we just run that for a second, it's actually just gonna go and hit that uh, 8000 server that we created uh, a second ago. And you can see there it's gonna do a ping, it's gonna call the tools list, and it's gonna call resources, um, and then it's gonna hit some of the tools. So you see it's gonna hit my hello tool and then it's gonna tell you the performance there. You can see here running at this, it's running at 39,000 requests per second on my machine, which is insane. Um, it can run faster. The bottleneck is actually the client and not the server. So we could run this a lot, lot faster if we wanted. And then of course you can scale that. Um, I think I got this at max running at around 55,000 requests per second. And then as you see, it's gonna run concurrent connections. Um, it's gonna, you see it's not dropping there, it's at 37,000. If I were to use the default Python MCP server, um, the Fast MCP version one, I think it was, which is the official server, it bugs out at around 100 connection, concurrent connections. It starts to, to fall off and it can't maintain its requests per second. And again, the request per seconds for that is much less than 37,000. This is like closer to the sort of, 500 mark or something like that. I, I can't remember the exact same number, but but you can see here, this is running um, in this case at a thousand connections and it's maintained this 36,000 uh, requests per second. So this is insanely fast. Now, what I want to be able to do is then obviously I want to be able to deploy that. So now if I look in there, you can see I've got a Docker file. You see Python server port 8,000 uh, host uh, 000. You're probably thinking to yourself, hang on, 
Um, didn't I need to pass dash dash HTTP? Well, actually, as you can see there in the Docker Compose, uh, the environment uh, MCP transport is equal to HTTP. So it will actually just go and do that by uh, default. But of course, uh, if you wanted to, you could just add dash dash HTTP in there as well. I may update the scaffolding template to do that automatically. We will see uh, as we go along. So I've got my Docker file. If I want to test that this works, I can just do a Docker compose up. And there you go, my server's up and running. And if I wanted to, I can go and hit uh, port 8000 and then uh, connect to it. Now, as I said before, we were gonna deploy this to the cloud. I'm gonna use uh, Fly. Um, again, Fly is a really nice uh, tool there. Uh, Fly.io, you can go in, uh, you can sign up for there and install the CLI. So you can follow the instructions. Once you've got Fly installed, really all you need to be able to do is type in Fly Launch. And then uh, what it's gonna do is detect my Docker file. Um, and then it will configure everything up for Hello MCP. So we'll just uh, say yes to all of this. It's gonna go and uh, create the instances that I need. You see it's uh, created as Hello MCP to fly.dev. So we're gonna copy that. We're gonna need that a little bit uh, later on. So that's pretty good. It's now created that. If I clicked on here, for example, now, you can see uh, you can see it's deployed server, MCP, hello MCP server two, so that's all there. If I ever need to make a change, I can just come back in here, maybe go in my server, change one of my tools, add a tool. Uh, maybe I wanna create something that says, uh, it could be any tool in the world. So you could have like PowerPoint, mass servers, you could, you could release whatever you want uh, within here. Um, but any, once I've made a change, all I would need to do is then just type in, once I made a change, all I would need to do is just type in fly deploy, and then it's gonna rebuild my image and then deploy that. So in this case, it'll be super fast because I haven't made any changes, and then uh, it will go and update. So now I have my MCP server running in the cloud, and now all I need to do is go and update uh, agent builder. Um, and it's gonna work fine. So we will just come back into Agent Builder. This was my agent, if you remember, so we'll close the preview. So now what we will do is we will remove that server and we'll just create it from scratch. So we'll click on Tools. I'm gonna select MCP Server. I'm gonna click Plus Server again. And this time, rather than uh, running at Hello MCP one we are just gonna do Hello MCP dash two fly the dev. And remember you need that forward slash MCP. Uh, and we'll say MCP uh, two. And again, we don't need any authentication in this case. I'm gonna click connect and it will connect up to the server that we've just deployed. There's hello add numbers calculate. We'll just click add. And then um, we can just run the agent one more time. We'll say add two numbers. Again, we'll just put in some random numbers in here. Uh, we'll hit okay. And if the demo gods are with us, we should see our two numbers uh, adding together. And again, uh, it's prompted me to approve the request to go out. And now we should be good and we get our number back. So what we have literally done in this very, very short video is we've created an MCP server from scratch, we've performance tested it, we've deployed it up in Fly.io, and we've hooked it up onto Agent Builder. So you can just go off and create your own MCP servers very, very quickly. If you wanna check out um, uh, the Chuck MCP server, um, you can just go to um, github.com uh, forward slash Chris Hay UK forward slash Chuck dash MCP dash server. And then you can see the readme and it will give you a whole bunch of examples to explore further. Again, I'm obviously showing you my MCP server. If you don't want to use my MCP server, you can use something like FastMCP or you can use the official uh, Python uh, SDK. And again, in my case, I'm focusing on performance. That's why I've used my one there and it's got the nice scaffold, et cetera. But this technique for at least hooking up the agent builder will work with any MCP server. But if you want that extra speed and performance, uh, using my Chuck MCP server is gonna get you going pretty quickly. Anyway, I hope this video has been useful and I will catch you on the next one.